Welcome to the Android 14 release edition of Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. In addition to Android 14, we'll be talking about Wear OS 4, gestures in Jetpack Compose, device streaming in Android Studio, Android X updates around browser and collection, and more. We released Android 14 and pushed the Android 14 source to the Android Open Source Project. The post covers some of the impact of performance and efficiency changes in Android 14, explaining how freezing cached applications, optimizing broadcasts, and reducing the memory footprint of art code allowed Android to increase long-standing limits around cached applications. This leads to fewer cold starts, which means faster app launches that use less power. It also covers key Android 14 behavior changes to test against, such as nonlinear font scaling to 200%, secure full screen intent notifications, and exact alarms being denied by default. It also mentions granting partial access to photos and videos, and recommends using the new Read Media Visual User Selected permission to optimize the user experience. The blog goes through new Android 14 capabilities, such as dynamic per app language preferences, regional preferences, the grammatical inflection API, ultra HDR images, upgraded camera extensions, lossless USB audio drawing with custom meshes, the Canvas hardware buffer renderer, superior system share sheets, new cross-activity and cross-task predictive back system animations, and more. And it also includes updates in Android 14 that are available to apps running on earlier Android releases, such as support for OpenJDK 17, Credential Manager with passkeys, and Health Connect. Finally, the post covered the Android SDK upgrade assistant within Android Studio, and how to use it to assist you in updating your app for the latest target SDK version. We announced that the Pixel Watch 2 is here, and it ships with Wear OS 4, joining the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, 5, and 6 series devices on the platform. First-gen Pixel Watches are expected to receive a system update to Wear OS 4 later this year. Wear OS 4 includes the declarative XML watch face format, supports transferring data from one Wear OS watch to another using Cloud Backup and Restore, allows users to transfer their watch to a new phone without needing to perform a factory reset, offers enhanced capabilities for tiles, and more. Wear OS 3 is based on Android 11, while Wear OS 4 is based on Android 13, so your app will need to handle system behavior changes that took effect in Android 12 and Android 13. Make sure to review the behavior changes and new features. We've also released updated 64-bit only system images for Wear OS emulators starting at Android Studio Hedgehog to help you test your apps on Wear OS 4. Yolanda created a deep dive video around utilizing rich gestures in Jetpack Compose. It focuses on using gesture modifiers and gesture recognizers, beginning with a summary of the toolbox or pointer input, comparing and contrasting the pointer input gesture recognizers to using the clickable, combined clickable, draggable, scrollable, and transformable modifiers. It then goes through a guided tour of doing rich gesture interactions in Compose, demonstrating all of the gesture patterns involved with a photo grid, it allows for hold to select and multi-select, as well as a photo view that uses gestures such as pinch and tap to zoom and drag to pan. Over in articles, Chris covered device streaming in Android Studio, an early access service powered by Firebase that allows you to manually interact with and test your app on real physical devices located in Google's secure data centers. Select the device you want, connect, and in moments, you'll have a direct ADB connection to the device, allowing you to use your favorite tools both inside and outside of Studio, such as LogCat, the debugger, profilers, UI design tools, and more. Just like you would with a local device. To learn more and register for the program, visit the sign-up page. We had some fun shorts hit the channel, including building UIs for all form factors, a reminder that Jetpack Compose can be used to target phones, foldables, tablets, watches, and TVs, as well as laptops and desktops, too. We also covered three reasons why you should use Jetpack Window Manager in your app right now. Make sure to use window size classes rather than the device display size when implementing your adaptive layout. For foldables, you can use the Window Info Tracker to query the state, occlusion type, orientation, and bounds of folding features to implement things like tabletop mode. Finally, the library provides you the activity embedding APIs to implement things like list de detail layout with minimal code changes and also allow embedding an activity from another app into yours. Future releases plan to add APIs for concurrent display modes. Finally, we covered when to use Google Pay versus Google Play billing. Uh, spoiler, depends on whether you're selling digital products and content or not. Over in Android X, 
Browser 1.7 Alpha 1 added a bunch of new APIs, providing more control around custom tabs, including enabling the bookmarks and download buttons in the overflow menu, enabling sending initial URLs to external handler apps, specifying the target language that Translate UI should be triggered with, and more. While Collection 1.4 Alpha 1 added high efficiency collections, such as Scatter Map, Scatter Set, and Object List that combine low allocation overhead with high performance, along with collections that store primitives without boxing. So that's it for this week. With Android 14, Wear OS 4 and the Pixel Watch 2, gestures in Jetpack Compose, device streaming in Android Studio, Android X updates around browser and collection, and more. Remember to like, subscribe, share, stay safe. Come back soon for your next update from the Android developer universe.